If you can hear my voice, I'm gonna ask you a question. You don't gotta answer me, just answer it yourself. Think about it. What does God think? Ask yourself that. It's in your mind, okay, what, it, what does God think about the world? What does he think about the world? You know the famous verse, God, so, so God loved the world. He does love the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth on him should have everlasting eternal life. The key word is believe. Believe. Now, because people don't believe, that's why they're condemned. Because you don't believe does not change the fact that Jesus Christ still died. He still shed his blood for your sin. Whether you believe it or not, if you don't believe, he still died for you. And you're going to give an account for him dying for you. You're going to give an account for not believing that someone was willing to die for your sin. We don't have no excuse. Jesus Christ died for our sins and he that believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life and this is life eternal that you believe on him whom God has sent which is Jesus is if you don't believe you're condemned already he said he didn't come to condemn the world to come to Jesus didn't come to condemn you but if you don't believe you're already condemned because you have not accepted the antidote for work for the world's problem salvation is free yeah oh Salvation is free. Nobody had to pay Jesus to come to do what he did for humanity. So it is now. Any, any person who claims to be a man of God and wants to charge you for the gospel, he's a liar and a deceiver. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is free. It's free. All you have to do is believe and obey what's written. A lot of these places that make it complicated is believe what the Word of God says. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Wait for the promise of the Father and believe on Jesus as the Scripture has said. That's it. Yes, you're going to go through persecution. People may hate you. But God will take care of you when you do it the right way. make religion and salvation about everything that God said it's not about. They make it about color. They make it about race. They make it about male and female. They make it about money. They make it about the building and make it about all types of politics. All the things that God said it was not about. The purpose of the gospel is to save that which is lost. That's the purpose then it's the purpose now. That what should be the focus always should be on seeking and saving those that are lost and giving them the truth. It's not enough to be a good person. Now, I know a lot of good people, but they're not believers. Morally good people. People use their family members as excuses. Oh, my grandmother, she was really religious. She did this, she did that. But she didn't obey the gospel. I know that's a hard saying. You may say, oh, you what? My granddad, he's not, in, he's not going to heaven. I can't put them there or take them out. But just because they did something, what about you? Did you repent? Did you obey the gospel? 
Don't ask me about somebody in your family who you respected that's not even alive. What did you do? Because if your person was so religious in your family, why didn't you change? People talk about Mother Teresa. She did a lot, okay? But she can't save you. Don't use Mother Teresa as a standard for what you want to do in life. In the eyes of God, that's not going to work. God is not going to judge you by Mother Teresa. He's not going to judge you by Mary. He's not going to judge you by the Pope. He's not going to judge you by Justin Trudeau. He's going to judge you by His Word. Some of you don't even know why you're in the religion you're in. Some of you were forced into it by your ancestors who were forced into it by slavery. Some, a lot of you were in religions that was conquered by other nations in war and they made you serve their gods. So all you have been taught have been lies. And that's all you know. If I ask some of you why you Catholic, why you Muslim, you can't even really tell you. You couldn't even tell me. All you can say, oh, my mom was, my granddad was, my great granddad. No, don't tell me about who was, tell me why. That's the beauty of the gospel of salvation of Jesus Christ. We can tell you why we got saved. We can tell you how we got saved. It's not no mystery. We don't have to say, oh, because of my granddad or my mom. We can tell you that the word of God changed us. The reason why we're in the faith we're in is not because we were conquered by another nation and forced into it. We can tell you why we believe what we believe. Ask yourself, why do you believe what you believe? And if you strip away all the fact, I can guarantee it's because of what you've been listening to on television and what you've read in books that have programmed you to believe a lie. Why do you walk around with a cross on your, on your neck? Ask yourself why? What does that cross mean to you? What does it represent? Oh, it represent Jesus down on the cross. Okay, then let's talk. Let's talk about why he went to the cross. Wearing the cross to remind you of it doesn't mean anything. Having a fake picture in your house doesn't mean anything. Getting tattoos or brain hands on your skin doesn't mean anything. Saying the sinner's prayer doesn't mean anything if you don't change. Going to a confession booth doesn't mean anything if you don't change. Ask yourself when you go to church, when you go to, to mass, why you believe and why you do the things you do. Ask yourself why. And ask yourself, where do you get it from? Find it if it's in the Bible that the priest holds and reads to you what he wants to read to you and not tell you the full truth. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself. why they want to take prayer out of school why ask yourself why they all out of all the religions in the world why does the name of Jesus Christ get fought the most out of every religion in the world why do people fight the name of Jesus Christ the most you know why because that's the only name that can save they don't fight you if you mention no other false God when you start talking about Jesus then they have a problem. You can talk about anything 
any other topic, anywhere, start talking about Jesus, then you gotta get quiet. You can talk about any religion on the job except Jesus. You can talk about any religion on the job except Jesus. Ask yourself why. People get talk about Jesus around Christmas time. Around the time where Christmas got nothing to do with Jesus. Ask yourself, why do you believe that Jesus was born on December 25th? Who told you that lie? Thank you. Who told you that? Why do you even believe that? Ask yourself, why? When Easter come around, and they call it Good Friday. Ask yourself, why do you believe that lie? Jesus said he will be in the earth three days and three nights. Now you count from Friday to Sunday and tell me, is that three days and three nights? No, the Catholics lie to you. They even lie to you with basic math. So they can't even tell you the truth about when Jesus went to the grave and when he rose, how can he tell you the truth about anything else? Three days and three nights, he was in the earth. If you count from Friday to Sunday, that's not three days and three nights. But you ask yourself, you have heard this lie for centuries. And then on top of that, the devil boasts his, he boasts and have you also celebrate what he really wants you to celebrate is the pagan Easter, the bunny. That got nothing to do with Jesus Christ's resurrection. Christmas, the false pagan winter solstice. The devil got you worshiping devils and then claiming it is about God. yourself why you believe what you believe if you even go to church ask your pastor ask your rabbi ask your priest ask your cardinal why do you why are you telling me this stuff where is it in the bible but you are willing to accept a lie than hearing the truth because you can't accept the fact that all these years people have been leaving this and going on because they have money and all this type of things. But what about your soul? That's the reason you go to church, right? It's not enough to say you, you believe in God. It's not enough to just say you believe in God. The devil believe in God. Glory to God. Do you know that? It's not good enough to say, oh, I believe in God. The devil believe in God. And you know what? The devil knows there's only one God. The devil got you out here believing, thought, believing things that he don't even believe. Right. The devil don't believe in them idols. Right. He know they ain't got no power. That's why he deceiving you to believe in those idols. Because he know if you ever believe in the true God, he will lose his power over you. So yeah, he's laughing. He look, I got these dummies bowing down to statues and bowing down to Mary. And I say this in love. I don't hate you, I love you. I'm against the devil. I hate to see how the devil got people going and coming like zombies. Like there's no hope. The health organization got everybody, majority of people wearing masks. Do they believe that's the right thing to do? Tomorrow, if they were to come out and say, mask cause COVID-19, all of you be throwing them on the ground. All of you be throwing away your mask. Tomorrow, if the, if the health minister say, COVID-19 is caused by wearing masks, all of you would throw them away. 
Because that's how much confidence you have in what they say. That's true. That's true. Yet they still haven't said this thing is airborne. Yet they don't tell you how much money they're making off this propaganda and lies. God never lied to no one and he never will. And because he never tells it, he can never lie and never will. And because he told us all the truth, when judgment comes, we can't say a word. That's right. We're going to have to tell God, well, I believe what CTV said. I listened to CP24. I listened to CNN. I listened to Fox. I listened to this guy on YouTube. I listen to this person on Twitter. I trusted that person on Facebook. But did you trust the infallible word of God? Look, we're not perfect. We have struggles too. We are men of like passion. We have our ups and downs. We have our tests and trials. We have our temptations too. We have our families to take care of too. We're not different from you all. The only difference is God saved us. We didn't do that on our own. Yes, we couldn't save ourselves. That's why Jesus had to come. We love you folks. We really do. And we pray. We pray for everybody. No one is exempt. Jesus' blood is good for everybody. Salvation is for everybody. If you examine every religion in the world, you know how much stuff they hijacked from the Bible and put it in their books and flipped it and made it for themselves? The Sikh religion, where do you think they get long hair from? You think they originated that? They didn't start with that. That was a Levitical law of the, of the, of the, of the Nazarites. They got that from the Bible. That's, but see, the, the higher ups in these religions, they know. That's why they keep the people stupid and don't let them read the book for themselves. We have to go back to the Bible. Go back to what's the Word of God. This is the Word of God. People want to complain about the Word of God. Oh, it was translated. It's translated this and translated that. But think about it. It's been tampered with. How? When it's condemning and talks about things that are right now. How could it be tampered with if, since it's so accurate? Something that's tampered with cannot be accurate. When it talks about men shall be lovers of their own selves, that's accurate. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, that's accurate. So he themselves teaches, having itching ears, it's your turn away the ears from the truth. That's accurate. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's accurate. Glory to God. That's accurate. That's not tampered with. That's accurate. That's accurate. Yes. He said, You shall be persecuted for my name's sake. That's accurate. Yes. Glory to God. That's, the book is not tampered with. Amen. The devil tampered with your mind. That's right. That's right. The Bible is accurate. That's right. Glory. That's right. Glory, glory to oh, God. Yes. It's accurate. Hallelujah. Men love darkness rather than light. That's accurate. Because their deeds are evil. That's accurate. When you want to be with a man, that's evil. When a man want to be with another man, that's evil. When a woman want to be with another woman, that's evil. The Bible is accurate. The Bible calls it 
unnatural affection. That's accurate. Don't believe that lie or the Bible been tampered with. And for you hypocrite black Hebrew Israelites, or you want to say, oh, the white man gave us the Bible, you're a liar. White man is not that powerful to give us something so accurate. No color, no man is that powerful to give us the Bible to be so accurate. This has been inspired by God Almighty. If man had his way to, to, to do something, they would have. If man could change the word of God, they would have. But man cannot change the word of God. That's why it's so accurate. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's what the word of God says. You hate the light. You don't want to come to the light. That's accurate. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You know why the Bible is so accurate? The Bible says, and we see the evidence of the word of God every time it rains. And people still deny the Bible. He said, I will set my bow as a token yes. in the sky. As a covenant between me and the earth that I won't destroy it by water. Every time it rains, we see the evidence that the Bible is accurate. Yes. And people still deny the book and say it was tampered with. Liars.